Hey, welcome back, it's Ben again. Today we're going to learn how to train our custom model using our own PC or using Google Collaborate's free GPUs. So since last time I finished annotating all of the images we got of our mask. So you can see here I went through all of these. It was about like 220 something images and I did the annotations for each one. And that worked out pretty well. That took a little bit of time, but you know, it takes some time to pre-process things. So we have this folder all set up and we also have our models folder all set up, our object detection folder. So now the next step in the process is going to be getting a model to take from the model directory and using it to train our model. So we can do that by going to the TensorFlow 1 detection model zoo. So TensorFlow support for object detection TensorFlow 2 actually just came out, but this tutorial is going to still follow TensorFlow 1. Hopefully I'll make an update video at some point about TensorFlow 2, but for now we're just going to follow the way we've been doing it. So if we go to this model zoo, it gives you a whole list of different models you can use to train your, uh, your own model. So they're all classified by different speeds and performance. So the one that most people use is this one right here, the SSD MobileNet V1. This is kind of like the basic one, so it's pretty fast and it's decently accurate, which is nice to see. So you generally, the faster something is, the less accurate it is. As you can see here, like 26 seconds goes down to 18, 29, 18, 29, 16. So this one right here is 30 milliseconds and we have accuracy of 21. So there are other models that are a lot more accurate, but are a lot slower. Like for instance, we have this one down here, 620 milliseconds, which is a lot, but it's 37, so it's gonna be really accurate. Or even this one's at 1800 milliseconds. That's almost two seconds of delay. So, but for our purposes, we're just gonna use this one right here. So I already have it downloaded, but if you download this one, you're gonna get this tar uh, folder right here, which is an archive. So along with that, we also need to go here, which is our samples and configs. If your model or the repository that you cloned at the beginning of this is the most up to date, it'll have all of the configs you need in it already under, here, let me show you. If we open up or the object detection. So if we go, so if we're in our normal object detection folder, we can go to models and this will have all the config files you already need. But if for some reason the config you want isn't in here, you can just go to this website and grab it yourself. So the one that we're gonna get this one, it's V1 Coco. So we're gonna go look for that. It's D V1 Coco. That's V2. Here it is. So this is the one we want to download. All right, and you know, instead of download, what did I want to download it? Because I don't want to copy the whole thing again. All right, you can either use this one or you can use this one right here, the MobileNet V1 Pets config. I'm just saying this one because I already have this one on my PC and it does the same thing. This one was just trained for detecting pets rather than detecting whatever the other one was. I think the other one was like common objects. So I already have this one on my PC, so we're gonna use that one and just edit it to make sure that it works correctly. So to do that, first, let's see, let's get the downloaded file. I'm just going to open up downloads. We're going to pull it out here. Actually, I might need to download it. I don't remember. Uh, that's not... Okay, yeah, let's download it. I lied. Let's go get it. So let's download this one. We're going to put it in downloads. So then... Alright, so that should be downloading. And let's just open up our mask. So we're just going to put it in here for now. Move that. And we're just going to extract it. And then we get this file right here, which has everything that we need. Actually, this pipeline config, may, we may be able to use this. Not sure. But anyways, once we have that, let's get the config file. I should have a copy of it over here. Let's take a look at it. So I'm just going to use Notepad++ to edit this. Okay. So yeah, so this is it's going to look like this for most of them. So the things you'll have to change are the number of classes, which is right here. So generally it'll say 90 or 37 or whatever this one was previously trained on. So just change it to how many you have. So in our case, we just have one. So we change that to one. And then down here, there's a whole bunch of things we have to change. Well, for me, they're probably gonna be updated, but you'll have most likely have to change them. So for a fine tune checkpoint, I'll just make it so that it's the name of the folder slash model dot checkpoint. So for this one, we're using the 2018-0128. So that'll be that right there. Again, if you're using a different one, just go to the folder 
just do rename, copy that, and then just paste it right here. On the full on the file that you would normally download, there's usually like a longer extension I could probably show you. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up again. So this is what like the normal one looks like. Yeah, so you can just see here path to be configured. Basically, everywhere where you see path to be configured, you gotta ch you gotta change it up. So that's the first one we gotta do. Let me just pull this up over here. And then we have to change the input path and label map path under train input reader. So for the input path, this is gonna be where our labels and where we have our object detection pbtx file is. We haven't made that yet. We're gonna make that in a minute. So just don't worry about that. Again, just change these to where your files are. So these are where our TF records are. So we put that in data. If yours is somewhere else, just change it to be somewhere else. Again, on the default, they have all this extra stuff in here, but we don't need that for what we're doing. So just do train.record or whatever your TF record is. So for label map path, this is uh, the file we're going to add, or you can make this training wherever you want it to be. I might change it to training later, actually. We'll, we'll, we'll see. <laughs> so, um, and then again, down here, we have input path. So again, this is gonna be for test. And then this is gonna be training. Uh, yes, yeah, so I might change this up later, but that's all we really need to do. Um, right here for batch size, I'm actually going to change this to 24. This is basically going to be how many how many images and samples it's going to throw into the model at once to train. This does take up a lot of memory on your GPU or system memory. So if you're getting memory like out of bounds errors or not enough memory, change this to a smaller batch size. Or if you have a lot of memory, change it bigger if you want and it'll go faster. So we're going to save that. That should all be good. Make sure everything's in the right place. So we have this in here. So I'm actually going to move this into training. So once that's in training, let's move. This is actually the wrong folder over here for models. Let me just move real quick. This is the one that we were working out of before. I just had to make a copy for something else I was doing. It's the same exact thing. Don't worry. So we're in object detection. And all right, so we still have our files we did the last time. So this is everything that we had before. So what I'm gonna do is actually gonna delete the data folder that's in here. Because what we wanna do is copy all of these folders or files. I'm just gonna copy those and we're gonna paste them right into here. So that might take a second. So basically we're gonna just be putting in our own data into here. All right, so we got all of that. Whoops, I forgot to make the file that we need. So we're gonna go into, let's do it in training actually. It might be the wrong place. We can change it in a middle minute. So what we're gonna do, where we're gonna create a new text document and we're gonna open this up. And this is really simple. This just tells the actual camera, if we're using the camera or image detection, what to call it, like to put the, the name on the boxes. So we're doing cloth masks. So we're just gonna go like this and then ID one name, we call it cloth mask. Like that, and then like that. Let me make sure I just formatted that correctly. Yep, looks like it. Okay. So now all you gotta do is save as, change this down here to all files, and then we wanna call this, oops, object detection. Make sure it's a hyphen and not an underscore. Dot pbtxt. So that's gonna change it to a pbtxt file. So close this and we can see right here, it created a new file for us. So we can get rid of that original one and that should be all set. All right, so now let me just make sure we're on track for our cheat sheet. <laughs> all right, so all files. So now we removed everything we have. So now we're gonna start our training. Fun, okay. So right now I'm in actually the wrong folder. I need to move back a couple. So I need to go into, what did I call this folder? I just, I only renamed it. It's our, our same models folder. There we go, it's this one. So we need to go into research and then we're gonna go into object. Well, actually first let's do research. And then we're going to, one of these commands we used from last time, this set Python path. It's good to do it every time you run this. And then we're gonna move into object detection. So now we're going to run our training. So actually I'm gonna delete this out of here. Again, I'll post these commands in the description below because they're kind of long. So actually I'll go over this command real quick. So basically we're just calling the train.py script 
and we're setting flags for the training directory, which is where all of our files are going to be saved. And for our pipeline config is basically the configuration file that we're using. So if you have a different configuration file or you need to set it up, you put the name of the file right here and then just dot config. And then we do log to standard error. So let's copy this and let's run it. Let's see if we get an error. Can't open the file. Oh, whoops, I forgot a step. I did forget something. All right, so inside of our object detection, we need to go into the folder legacy and we need to take these files. We're just gonna copy them. We're gonna paste them out here. We're gonna replace that file. So the reason why those are in legacy is that those are kind of older files since we're doing this sort of in the older way. It's not really the most up to date, but it's the way I learned to do it. So it's the way I do it. And I'm sure you could change something else somewhere else to change the scripts up to make it work for legacy for that folder. But I like to just move them all in here and it makes life a little bit easier for a moment. So let's see if that's gonna work now. I hope it does. <laughs> no module name net. Okay. So if we're getting this error, no module name nets, we have a pretty simple fix. We're going to go in the folder back one. So we're going to go back into research. We're going to take this folder called slim. We're going to copy that. And then we're going to go back into object detection and paste that into slim or paste slim into object detection. Let's try it again. Let's see what it's going to say. No module name nets. Okay, we can fix that. So if you get no module name nets, all you gotta do is take the nets folder inside of here, inside of slim, and just paste it inside, inside of object detection. So let's run it again. We might get another error, let's see. No module name deployment, okay. Yep, so that means we can also just go into slim and we're gonna take deployment and we're gonna go here. Sometimes it has to do with the path setup, if the paths are a little mixed up. If not, you can just do this and it should make things happier, better. Maybe. What can it find now? Failed to create open data object detection .pbtxt. Okay. So it looks like we need to take our, yeah, cause in that config file, I kind of mixed it up. So we're just gonna copy it instead of changing the file cause I'm a little lazy. <laughs> we're just gonna paste it in here and hopefully that'll work. So let's run this again. All right, looks like we might get it going this time. I'm actually gonna open up my eyes. I down clocked my computer for a moment, but we're going to get the full performance out of it. So I don't have a compatible GPU for training models. So to do that, you'd have to get TensorFlow GPU and you need a CUDA enabled GPU, which is generally, well, not generally, just is NVIDIA cards. So I have an AMD card, a Ryzen, uh, not a Ryzen, our RX 5700 XT, which is a really nice graphics card, but unfortunately does not work for what we're doing. So if you don't have a compatible graphics card, you can use your CPU, although it can be pretty slow depending on what you're doing. So we'll see here how fast we're going. So we can see what's going on. I'll show you in a minute. So we're saving checkpoints to training slash model. So checkpoints is gonna be what saves all of our progress that we've made. And we're gonna use those checkpoint files in a minute later. So we can see here, we're starting to get steps in. It takes a little bit to start at the beginning. You'll probably see a bigger jump right here. So basically what it's going to do is it's going to go through all these steps and it's going to go step after step after step and it's going to try to decrease this loss percentage right here. We want the loss percent to be as low as we can get it. Generally around 1%, you hope to get underneath 1%, but if you can't, it takes a long time to get there if you don't have a good system. So this may take a while to start running, again because I'm on CPU. So I'll show you where it's going to go though. So if we go into training... You can see we started to get some more files into here. So these aren't the files we generally need, but what you'll start to see once this starts going and we'll get a ton of files, a ton of steps going, you'll see the lost steps going. And every once in a while, let's say like saving checkpoint or summarizing. And so you'll get more checkpoint files in here that'll have numbers on the end of them. And those are the files we're gonna look for later. So we'll see if that's running. So we're gonna let this run in the background. And what we're gonna do is actually show how to do this, do the same process using Google Collaborate, which if, you, if you've never used Google Collab, it's kind of like, it's like all of other Google services. It's open, so not open source, but you can share it with other people and you can edit code in this one. And it's built for using TensorFlow, which is really handy. So let's go over there. So this is the file that I've been using that I've put together. So what we're gonna do, let me delete that. That's not meant to be there. 
I'll, I'm probably gonna edit this file up too, clean it up a little bit and put it on the GitHub also if you wanna use it. So I'll walk a little bit through of what we're gonna do. So the first step, we're basically just gonna run these one after each other, one after another. So we're just gonna do pip install. We're gonna upgrade pip and upgrade protobuf. Sometimes there's a problem where protobuf isn't working correctly and doing this step right here fixes it. So let's just do that. So this next one just sets the TensorFlow version and we're importing TensorFlow and installing NumPy. Again, that's some extra stuff in here that we don't really need. And that's gonna go. So this right here just checks your GPU status. Oh, and to make sure that you're using a GPU, go up here on runtime and do change runtime type and make sure you're using a GPU. All right, so we can check GPU status and we'll run this one also. This just means that we are connected to a GPU, which is what we want. And we'll wait for this to run. This is gonna show us some more statistics about our GPU. Not really necessary, but let's see. So it's gonna show us how much RAM is free. So we have 12 and a half gigs. And cause you, you share GPUs on Google Collab. So if you get like a high utilization, you might wanna try restarting it and getting a different connection because you want as much RAM as you can get. So this is where the interesting part comes in. So to get our data, into Google Collab, we actually are gonna use Google Drive. So what we have is that this is just my Google Drive and I actually copied and pasted the models folder right here. So you can see it's everything that we had before. So I go into research and then object detection is right over here. And these are all of our files that we had. So doing that, we can, so that's the setup. All we gotta do is mount the Google Drive. So what we can do is this drive.mount and then we're gonna just change the directory and you'll see it's gonna ask me to log in. So right here, it says, go to this URL in a browser. So I'm probably gonna cut this so you can't see all my emails, but it's basically just gonna ask me for our login code. All right, yep, so this is just the code that we need. So we can copy this and then paste in the authorization code. Let's close that out. Which takes a moment, so there we go. Mounted at content drive. So just make sure that if you call it something else, just make sure you're in the models directory. So right here, we're gonna install and compile protobuf. We're gonna get Cython, and we're going to go into the research file, or then we're gonna compile protoc right here. And this just sets up our Python path, and then we're gonna build and install, just like we did in that first video with setup.py. So this file usually takes a long time to run because setup.py takes a long time to install over the cloud. So this is gonna go for a while. So don't be afraid if this takes up to like five minutes sometimes. It takes a long time if you're running it for the first time. If you run it multiple times, it's usually faster afterwards, but for the first time, be prepared for it to take a while. All right, so setup.py has finished installing. So we can move on. Let's have another GPU right here. So you always have a session with Google Collaborate and it just tells you how much time you have. So usually it starts at about 12 hours. So it's usually plenty for what we're gonna do, especially for what we're gonna do, 12 is plenty. So right here is where it gets a little bit more interested. We're gonna start training. So we're just gonna do pip install tfslim, and we're just going to cd into the correct directory. We set up some Python paths. Again, these are some commands that we don't need. I'll clean up. This is the main command right here. It's the same one that we ran on the command prompt. So this is train.py and then training. So it'll actually go into our Google Drive and save the directory or save our files into training. So let me look, take a look in here. I did some practice training before this. You'll probably see some files in here already. Yep, so. We'll go back into here and we'll run this. Again, it's probably gonna take a minute to start. And if you're doing this on the cloud, you might also get those errors that we were getting before where it's can't find nets, can't find slim, deployment, whatever. Just do the same thing where you move those folders up into object detection and it should fix it for you. If you do it while you're in Google Drive, so say, so it's like you edit something in your Google Drive and then you wanna go over here. It won't, it doesn't update at the same time. So what you'll probably have to do is click on runtime and then where is it? Runtime, and then factory reset runtime. So that'll unmount your drives. That'll reset all the variables so everything can update in the back end again, which may be important. I had to deal with that a few times. So I was wondering like, why isn't this updating or it's working? So it should work. It can save files to your drive automatically, but reading from, it takes some time for it to like readjust and everything. So again, this does take some time to load. So I did, so I pulled up the command prompt again while we were waiting for that. And I ended up stopping it because I didn't want to eating up all my CPU power while I was trying to record the video. 
So you can see this is what it starts to look like. You'll start to get these steps right here, and the loss will eventually go down slowly, slowly. So I'm getting like 3.5, three, three and a half seconds per step, which is pretty terrible actually, because again, I'm on CPU. These things are really meant to run on GPUs. So, and when I didn't get it far enough to show any summaries, but it'll say like summary save to blah, blah, wherever. So we'll start to get those. I can see in the background, we're starting to get this to run. So I'll show you how to save the graph on either one though, don't worry. So, all right, again, we can see down here, saving checkpoint to training slash model. So that's in here. This training, uh, I lost it over here. So it will be updating live to this folder. Sorry I didn't clear all this junk out of it before, but you'll get the idea. So there we go, starting the step. So these steps are much faster. This is doing 0.3 seconds a step, whereas mine was three and a half seconds a step. So you can see how much faster this will record, or not record, it will train. So, and again, sometimes it does start a lot like with the loss. Well, this loss is probably because I was training it before already. Now that I think about, oh, you can see, yeah, I'm on step like 65,000 or is it 66,000? Yeah. So for you, it'd be on like step zero and it would look a little bit more like mine did with like percent, like loss would be like 10%, 11%. So just let this run for a while. So once you start to see that you're getting down to like one, like 1 1.2, 0.8, 0.9, like in that area, in that area consistently, then you can just use control C to stop it or you can go up here or you can click this to end it or you can do runtime interrupt execution. Before you do that, make sure you go into training and you look to make sure that the checkpoint files have saved. You wanna make sure all three files have saved. Every checkpoint has three of them. So you get a .data, .index and a .meta. So you need all three files So make sure that so, cause sometimes like you'll see like recording summary for step like 6,000, but you won't see that step recorded in training for a long time. So make sure you wait until you've gotten to a point where it is in your folder and you feel comfortable ending it. So I am going to end this one right here because I already have some files we can use. So I'm just gonna interrupt execution. So there we go. So again, I'm just gonna use some files we already have in here. I'm actually going to delete some other stuff so you can see how it looks like. Delete some files. So the next step is to export our inference graph. So this is gonna be the graph or the neural network and the model really that our TensorFlow is going to use or object detection. Excuse me, sorry. <laughs> so we're gonna do, so it says Python export inference graph, which is a script we have. And then we have the pipeline. So again, it's just the name of the configuration we're using. And then the train checkpoint prefix is the checkpoint file that we most recently have. So all you have to do is you point to where it is. So training is where we have it slash model that checkpoint. And then this number right here is going to be changed every time you run a model. It's gonna be the most recent one that you have. So the most recent one I had was 6537, I believe. That was, so yeah, so 6537 is the last set of information that we got. So that's what we're going to use. So, and then this one right here is going to be the name of the folder that we're going to save that graph to. So let's see, I said I just deleted stuff. I'm not sure if it's going to update. You don't have to have a folder named new graph or whatever it's called already. It'll create that file for you. So it takes usually a couple seconds. So it looks like that's done. Let's see if we got it over here. So there we go. We got the new file, new graph. So we got that, which is good that we're almost there. So now to download it off of Google Drive, it's a good idea to zip the file. So you can just run this. It's just modelgraph.zip. We're, we're, we're zipping this folder and we're gonna call it modelgraph.zip from the folder new graph. Pretty simple. Just run that. It takes a second again. It's usually faster to zip it this way than it is to go into here and zip it for some reason. I tried both and it's so much faster to zip it on here. So we'll see. It's probably gonna update in a moment, but we should get, an, oh, there it is. So our model graph.zip is right there so perfect but if you wanted to do this if you were doing this on the command prompt instead like i was doing uh let me just clear the screen real quick so if we were doing it on here we can just run another command it's really similar it's actually the same command it's just the export graph so you can just run it's the same exact file or full uh not file command so again make sure you just update that checkpoint file and you can name the graph whatever you want to do it's the same exact thing and so we don't have to zip it if we're on the local PC because it's already just in a format we can use already. So now I got to reorient myself. 
So let's download it. I probably actually have it downloaded already. Maybe not. Okay, let's download it then. So model graph. Let's download it. That's just saying it's too big to scan for viruses, which is fine. All right, we're getting one. So that means I do have it. Let's just move it to where we were. So where user has been. We're in this models. Such a big directory. Uh, object detection. So then we can just paste it right into here or save it. So we're gonna go save. And we can go into detection. So then we have, so we have model graph right here. So what we wanna do is we just wanna extract it. So then we're gonna put it. So then we have the folder right here, new graph, which is what we want, which is good. So that's everything we need right there. So there you go, we trained our model and now we're ready to use it for our webcam if that's what you wanna do. <laughs> so let's pull that up. Hopefully it works on here because it's always fun when everything goes to plan. So there are some things we're going to need to update in our file actually. So let's open this file on a project. So this is the same file that we used last time when we used the original Coco dataset. So there are some things we can edit. Actually, I'm thinking about making a new file. Um, yeah, let's, let's make a new file, why don't we? I'm just gonna copy this. Actually, I might have one, on, no? Okay. So we're just gonna make a copy of it. So let's just rename it custom model webcam, so, something like that. I'll put it in the GitHub and I'll make a note if I end up changing the name of it because I that sounds kind of dumb, not gonna lie. <laughs> so actually, let me pull that up here. Uh, I always lose it, PyCharm. So custom model webcam, okay. So what we're gonna change is right here. So model name, so this is what you would normally use. So instead of this, we wanna change it to the name of our folder that we have, which in our case is new graph. So we don't need these two lines right here because this is used to download the files, or download the model, sorry. This we need, this we need, but we're gonna change this. So we're gonna change to where that label is, where we have our pbtxt. So we did put it in data so we can keep it like that. So we called it object, whoops, detection.pbtxt. Again, this is just the folder name of where we kept it. So you can change that. Number of classes, again, how many classes we have. We just have one. So we're not downloading our model, so we don't need any of this. And let's see, is there anything else we gotta change? I don't think so. Uh, this is if you want images. Let's see if it'll run. Hopefully it'll run. So uh, my webcam's plugged in. Let's see what happens, right? So hopefully it'll go. I do have a face mask next to me that we can try to. All right, looks like it's loading up. So there we go. There's me. So you can probably see two of me right now. Let's get a face mask. We should see. Oh, yeah, there it is. The lighting's kind of bad in here, but you should be able to see it. There it is. Look at that cloth mask. Look, we did it. So let me uh, have another one over here. It's a different color. Again, light's kind of bad, sorry. But you can see, that's a mask. You can put it on. Might be kind of hard to see me now. And we have our mask. That's great, that's basically all there is to it. And you can set this up to work with the image detection also. It's really similar. Uh, I might add another file to do that later, but that's basically the whole setup. Congratulations, you've trained your own model. So again, TensorFlow 2 does added support for object detection, so it does work a little bit different than this. There's some different files, so I'm gonna try working on that myself. And if I can make some progress, I'll make an update video on here too. But other than that, that's gonna be it for me. I hope you found this tutorial series helpful. If you can, leave a like and subscribe, and I'll see you next time.